Back again, the world dancing to the same beat. Club fever's gone global. DJs are the idols of the 90s. Judge Jules, Oki, Fatboy Slim and Seb Fontaine all earn a fortune and are worshipped like gods. 3,000 people go to cream each week. Locals like Maria, Stringfellow's dancer Luana and beauty queen Alex. In Leeds, Dean the Plasterer goes clubbing with one thing on his mind, women. 1999 is the club's biggest year yet. They want to be the best club in Ibiza. There's a festival to stage. They've lost resident DJ Paul Oakenfold and to top it all, they're facing their biggest challenge yet, organising Liverpool's official Millennium Party. <laughs> Every week over a million people go clubbing in Britain. They travel hundreds of miles to have it large at their favourite clubs. But single mum Maria's got cream on her doorstep. No, no, no! <laughs> no more. No, it oh, you know what? It comes 12 really at the time. <laughs> Looking forward to going out tonight. I've just been so stressed all week. Oh, yeah. We all have that. You know, Ex-policewoman Leslie and her sister Karen are bouncers at Cream and part of the 70 strong staff who work at the club. They decide who's in and who's out. Seb Fontaine is the club's new resident DJ. He's taken over from the world's most famous DJ, Oki, and has a lot to prove. <laughs> my people, I know my people to carry my phone. <laughs> it's such a lie. It's the bouncer's job to keep things under control outside and in. Since Karen and Leslie started on the door, there's been much less trouble. Clubs are opening all over the country and everyone wants a slice of the action. Scott King's got a one-nighter in Liverpool called Mishmash. He's determined to make it a super club and goes to cream as often as he can to pick up tips. 31-year-old James Barton started cream seven years ago with a £5,000 loan. 400 people went on the first night and it's now a multi-million pound global business. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I go out, I just go out and just let off. You can't let even, off, yeah, you yeah, can't even, you can't even so. talk to me. You can't even say to me, Maria, isn't he? I'll just say, fuck off! I am there. Every week, religiously, every week. Oh, but you've not been there in the past few okay, weeks, Okay, I you? never went last week because I never had no money, but... What about you gagging now, though? The club opens at 10 and closes at 4 a.m. every Saturday, and tickets cost between 8 and 11 pounds. It's one of the super clubs who, along with Ministry of Sound, Renaissance, Thunder Central, and Gatecrasher, have turned the dance scene into a billion-pound industry. Competitions fierce to book the biggest DJs, sell the most CDs, attract the biggest crowds to the best events, and dominate the world of dance. because everyone no, is just like so that. Place you want to pick up, no, everyone's just off the dead, so what's the point? They must probably wake up in the morning and think that you're a totally different person anyway. You come here to get off it and 
Behind the glamorous facade, owning a club's a job like any other. Global operations are run from a small office in a Liverpool side street. It's a family business. James's two brothers work for him as well as his dad, who runs the club's bar. James holds regular strategy and planning meetings with his top team, ex-Big in Japan lead singer Jane Casey, now director of communications, and money man Jim King. We'll all just chip in what we need. Think Ibiza, OK, Creamfields, we need to go through the marketing, site issues, promo, the whole shooting match. OK, I just want to do a little bit on sort of, I know it's not important, so don't want to go through too much, but there's two big clubs opening, well, there's three actually, Fabric, Renaissance and Hull, our friends which I think we just need to sort of think about our activity around when they're opening, whether we need to pay any attention or not. I'm just putting it on the table. Yeah. It's, not, it's not something which I think is massively important. Seb Fontaine is one of the top ten DJs in the world. He's become the new resident at Cream after the departure of Paul Oakenfold, who's left to join a rival club that's opening soon. DJs like Seb and Oki are superstars and treated like gods. In Ibiza, the clubbing season started. Between now and the closing parties in September, more than a million British clubbers are expected to jet in for a summer of sound, sun and sex. All the super clubs stake claim to a night and want to be the best club on the island. One of this year's first time Ibiza clubbers is Luana, a Stringfellows lap dancer. She's going with her boyfriend Craig and mates Mark and Andre, and she's determined to make an impression. I mean, all I'm going to need for daytime is bikinis, so let's face it, I am overpacking. So we take seven outfits for the night time. We're going to go to Manny Mission on the Monday. God's Kitchen Tuesday. Thursday we're going to go to Cream. And then Friday we'll go down to um, um, Ministry on Friday. So let's face it, half this stuff, three quarters of this stuff I don't even need. So you're taking it out? Yeah. Oh, oh. Seb started DJing at 17. He's worked his way up from warm-up sets to major residencies and is attracting a lot of attention. I think I'm the only person to have done ministry and cream. But, um, I mean, cream's amazing. You know, I, I, at the moment, I can't see me, you know, ever leaving. Of, of course, you know, that's going to change. But, I mean, the crowd up there are really special. We followed Paul Oakenfold as a residency at Cream. Um, did you try to make things different there or did you actually follow on from him? Paul was pretty good to me. Paul gave me some advice and said, you know, you should do this every week, you should do this. You know, he's been pretty good to me as well. A million miles away from Seb's superstar lifestyle, there are over 40,000 bedroom DJs in the UK. Paul Hillier is one of them, but he's on the brink of the big time. He's one of five finalists in a major DJ competition in London. I mean, it's just a nightmare trying to get into the scene at the moment. You know, you... Uh... Yeah, you, you want to get out and you want to play these clubs, but no one wants to give you a chance. That's what it seems like anyway, so unless you end up doing house parties for your mate or whatever, there's not a lot you can do. Staging Liverpool's official Millennium Party is James Barton's most ambitious project yet. The club's borrowed three quarters of a million pounds. They've got to sell 35,000 75 pound tickets to break even and they're facing a number of rival clubbing events on the night. Failure's not an option. I think we've got the best bill, if not in, if not in, in, in Europe, definitely in the UK for, for, for that night. And, uh, you know, the DJs include Paul Oakenfold, Pete Tong, Fatboy Slim, Seb Fontaine, Sasha. I mean, you know, it's an incredible lineup. Successful clubs can make millions and everyone's after a slice of the action. 70 miles from Liverpool, over the Pennines in Leeds, space, the new club, is opening. It's a race against time to get it ready, and the workmen are on 24-hour shifts. Dean, the plasterer, is a clubbing Casanova. I mean, if you get a woman, you get a woman. It's as simple as that. I mean, I, I mean, I mean it's accomplished if I get a woman, because I love it. And I love taking them home and taking them to bed. It's just, just brilliant. Just brilliant. But just remember, there's not a woman out my reach. Tell them what they want to hear. Clubs in Ibiza open after midnight and stay open until the morning. There are all-day clubs for people with the energy to party 24 hours, but Luana and her friends have decided to chill on the beach.
I'll tell you the worst woman I've been in bed with. The worst woman you've been in bed with is when you like, you get them in bed and they're naked. Right, you're going down, you're sucking the breast and they've got hairs on the nipples and it's like, whoa, big style, pull out mate. Pull out, I'll pull the cup and like that mate. And you don't want it, do you? You know what I mean? If 25-year-old bedroom DJ Paul Hillier wins the new DJ of the Year competition, it could change his life forever. Top DJs Oki and Sasha both started out mixing in their rooms, and Paul's hoping to follow in their footsteps. At home in Eastbourne, with only days until the contest, Paul's asked his friend Gary round to hear his set. Hello. Hello. Hi, mate. All right. How's it going? Yeah, you're not letting me Cool. What are you up to? Uh, all right. Just uh, been in the studio earlier. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, just sort of um, trying to sort myself out for this competition, really. Mm -hmm. um, just polishing my set, deciding what I'm going to play. Um, I'll just have a, have a mix and see what you think, yeah? Yeah! Right, see what you think, yeah? I'm just going to play, play a couple of things, though. No. I don't want to go too hard, but then again, you know. See what you think. So I'm fucking shitting myself. I like the bass. You like the bass? It's not just bang, 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 is it? No, no, but it's... It's a bit different as well, you know what I mean? It's midnight and Luana's getting ready for her first night out in Ibiza. She's going to manumission. <laughs> She's decided to wear her sexiest outfit for Ibiza's sexiest club. This is wicked, this is... In. Going to manumission will give Luana a great start to her holiday. Anyway. Manumission is one of the most expensive clubs in Ibiza and is famous for its live sex shows. At the stroke of midnight, things are starting to warm up. Two hours later, after a pre-club drink, Luana and the boys head to Manumission. So we know it, so we know it. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, I think this is probably going to be my only chance. If I don't do it now, it's I never will. Chance, so. If I don't do it now, I never will. So, yeah. So. Let's see what happens in the night. Disaster. Manumission was full and despite all the build-up and even blagging their way onto the guest list, Luana and her posse couldn't get in. They won't let us in because, um, well, it's not safe. Because there's um, too many people, they're overcrowded and it's apparently not manumission themselves as the night, it's the, the club and they said it's, it's overbooked or, twice or, over and it's just unsafe. They're stopping people from coming in. Next, the party in Ibiza. Seb's there and after her manumission disaster, Luana larges it. DJ God of Gods, Oki, is on the road and on a roll. And clubbing Casanova Dean, the plasterer, is on the piss and on the pool. Ibiza is crucial to all the super club's business. It can cost between £7,000 and £25,000 to stage an evening, and DJs charge five grand a set. But it's money well spent for the promoters, who can take over £100,000 a night. Cream's boss, James Barton, makes three or four trips to Ibiza each season. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Um, we're on the way to the airport. We're going to Ibiza today. 
<laughs> Seb Fontaine's going to Ibiza too. It's his first gig there as Cream resident and he's got to make an impact. Herbie? He prepares his sets at home and spends as much time as he can with his son Herbie. Let's see your poo go down. We need a poo, he's going to go wee. Wee! Oh, it's his face. Go away then. You're poop. Oh. I've never known a child with so many toys. Other than myself, of course. <laughs> it's kind of like having two lives because the two that's pretty you know, one's very hectic and you're kind of a million places and you know, kind of parties and stuff, but then kind of during the week I just really become a really quite a normal person. Bedroom DJ Paul Hillier has been working small South Coast clubs and practicing in his bedroom for eight years. Winning the prestigious new DJ competition means everything to him. He's even converted his nan to his tribal sound. I heard this a couple of months ago and I was just like, what the hell was that? Went rushing up to the DJ and I realised I've already got it. <laughs> it's kind of nerves all around at the moment. Um, you know, it, it's meant to be finding kind of like the, the best unknown DJ um, and this is something that I've been waiting for for years you know to, to get a bit of recognition you know Maverick clubber single mum and drama student Maria's on the hunt for a new clubbing outfit she's been saving for weeks and is taking daughters Khadija and Sophia to help her choose do you like that? Hey? Just lace it up down the back and lace it up from yesterday. Yeah, okay then, thanks. Tell you what, when I put it on, I'll show you that you can tie it up for me, okay? Right, if I have to. Yeah. Right, love, I've decided what I want. Oh, what are you going to do? Um, right. I'm going to go one to one, money. Excuse me. DJs each have their own sound, and Seb Fontaine creates his from his collection of over 40,000 tunes. This room just gets out of hand. I mean, you get sent so many records a week. You must get sent maybe, I don't know, 100 records a week, and they just kind of... They form their own little piles everywhere. It's all in some kind of mad, weird order <laughs> that probably only I could understand. So come up to present day, you've probably got, I've probably got the best part of, I don't know, all in all, eight to 10,000 records, I'm sure. Um, worth a lot of money. Well, hopefully, you know, tomorrow night I'll be able to draw on the new stuff and some old stuff and, you know, put together a really good set, a bit different. Cream's been in Ibiza for six years and James Barton's determined to make this their best year ever. Um, here we are in Barcelona airport. Um, en route to Ibiza. Um, what I never told you this morning is that sort of Ibiza is... Um, I think everybody knows a little bit about Ibiza, but it's a um, clubbing mecca where a lot of people go and uh, pay their homage to nightclubbing and everything else. And uh, Cream has been operating in Ibiza for over the last seven years, and um, I think it's fair to say that we're probably one of the most successful nightclubs on the island uh, between us and Manumission. Jane Casey is the club's director of communications, and she's facing her first millennium crisis. A local resident has threatened an injunction and she's going to meet her with top brass from Liverpool City Council. We're going to meet a lady who lives quite close to the site of the Pierhead celebrations. She's got a husband who has got a bad heart and um, she believes that the noise that night is going to kill him. Space, the new nightclub in Leeds is still behind schedule and the pressure's on. Clubbing Casanova Dean the Plasterer has got a lot of work to do, but girls are still uppermost on his mind. I'm like a man, let's go for married women. They don't have to pay me, I'll do it for now, I mean. I mean, I'd love it to get paid. Having sex, what you'd love? Oh, yeah. 
because I've got a big sex drive. Highly sex driven. Because end of the day, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You go out, it's like a cattle market. You go out and it's like sex. That's all it is. Sex. And if I don't go out and get it once on a weekend, I'm disappointed. Jane represents cream on PR. Uh, communications. communications. Yeah. Uh, Lorraine obviously had a, a concern about the event that takes place on Millennium Eve. I have a husband who cannot go anywhere where there is a bass beat because he's got a heart condition, it throws his heart out of sync and then I'll have a problem. I would like to be able to find a way of uh, reaching some sort of compromise with you where you feel that your husband would be in a safer position. Um, I don't really know what it is. There are a lot of people who do not feel mm -hmm. that cream are the right people mm -hmm. for but whatever their own personal reasons. With, if somebody else approaches the city council at this point with as much money to invest and goes to corporate bankers like we have and tie oh, down I, the I don't investment deals, that. then then. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? We believe in the city as much as you do. You might be out doing your walks and, and showing people and trying to encourage people to believe in their heritage. We believe in this city as well. We work really hard for this city. We've got as much right to be there as you have. Oh, I'm not saying you haven't got a right to be there. I, I, what I'm saying to you is that you're, you're saying about per you know the image yeah. and unfortunately people's image of cream if you like the mm -hmm. ordinary people who yeah. don't go to cream because mm -hmm. we're, we're not young yeah um, the perception of, of, of how they view you isn't always as high profile as perhaps you might like it no to be. absolutely because youth culture within its time is always frowned upon Scott King the small-time Liverpool promoter who's hoping his club mishmash will one day rival cream is biding his time working in a record shop I've done my time where I've sat on my arse and, and done nothing and you know you get to the stage where you realise it doesn't get you anywhere in life you know you, if you want to if you want to get anywhere you've got to go out and make it for yourself uh, I could be nice and happy and do a normal nine to five job in a factory or go and work in an office but you know it wouldn't be me it wouldn't be what I want to do uh, it's tunes in it it's tunes that count it's tunes that definitely count Jane's back at HQ reporting to money man Jim King. It's about popular culture. She really disliked cream and everything that we stand for. She's been before me. <laughs> she's been before okay. me. <laughs> she's she's going to be on our tail, so court case pending. Well, I would have been lucky to be on the front page of the Echo and we could get free publicity. Yeah, yeah so that's the best that's going to happen. In Ibiza, the business and the brand is never far from James's mind. I think I've always felt that um, Cream can sell tickets like nobody else. We've put more people into our club than anybody else. A bad night for us is a, is a good night, is a great night for other people, you know. Luana's boyfriend, Craig, has been keeping her amused by jumping off the rocks. But she's not the only member of the posse to catch some beachside action. I saw someone getting a nosh outside uh, S Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> was that a typical? Yeah, there was a bloke, literally, there was a bloke sat on the beach. He went shocked, you were just like jealous. That, with this girl, this girl going away for it, like hammer and tongs. And there's about ten people standing around going, Wee! <laughs> San Antonio. Encore. And she was going, look away, look away. As if you're going to look away. <laughs> so he did. <laughs> she carried on. What? Hey, me, i after a long day plastering at Space, the new Leeds nightclub, Dean's preparing for a big night out. He follows a strict hygiene routine, which he reckons makes him irresistible. And that is we have to shave. Always put some on the ears. Because when women are talking to you, the first thing they're talking to in it is, and it's a lovely smell. The amount of times I said hello with a lovely smell on them. Last Saturday I had in my bugging me and smelling me at the top of Mustang Sally's for about half an hour before I went to bed. I'll just put my shirt on. Luana's preparations are a bit more sophisticated. She's determined to turn heads. About a year and a half, two years ago, I started working at Extreme Fellows 
which is like ideal because it's so much it fills the gap for modeling whereas modeling you never know from one week to the next web you're going to be working whereas with string fillers it's so ideal because you can go in there and make such good money so you make the most of it now because you're in, in the day you're only here once so you should really go for whatever you're best at i'm living a different lifestyle to most people with the same age as me and that is only through using my looks and my body to my advantage i know there's a manic piece going around tonight but I don't know. If all else failed, I'm guaranteed with her. I know she's round with her mates and she's gonna like tell her mates to go in about half past twelve. And she'll probably stay on the club. And if all else fails, I can always bring her back here. Paul Oakenfold, DJ God of Gods, is on a world tour and has reached Preston. It's a sellout and tickets are like gold dust. I do like to play gigs like Preston. Um, they're real gigs. And the students for me are a wonderful crowd to, to play to. In Ibiza, Seb Fontaine, Oki's replacement at Cream, yeah. is gearing up to go on stage. Jim and James who run Cream are, are, are really, and it's a team in all honesty, it's not just Jim and James by far. Some great people work there and I've had, you know, and, and I miss them, and I miss the people, the crowd most of all, but I have to move on, I've said this so many times and, you know, it, it, it's a situation of where I, you know, I need to move on and, and hopefully, you know, they're aware of that, they understand it and if anything it was probably good that I left Cream. For Dean, a night out means two things, beer and birds. For him, clubbing's about pulling, not dancing. Are you single or not? Start finishing. Well, where's your oh, bike? finishing then. Well, where's your bike right now? Well, 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 that's no good, is it? <laughs> 12 mile away, innit? I'm in now. I'm is, that, is that quick? It'll be, it'll be done by the time it gets home. <laughs> <laughs> Despite his punishing schedule, Oki comes alive once his gig starts and the clubbers go wild. Luana and her friends are heading to Cream in Ibiza, but for the second night running, things aren't looking good. We can't get a taxi, so being I'm the only one who hasn't had anything to drink, um, I'll drive, uh, take the car, then we can drive down there and get someone to pick it up in the morning. So. Wait, 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 get a cab, we'll get down there till dead late. Another venue and another girl for Dean. Did you like an affair? I'm out <laughs> Yo, I love it! Single, yeah, but I've got them open up here. Yeah, you're single? Yeah? You're single? Yeah? I'm sorry, but I'm tied. She loves me, I know she does. I know she, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. It's 1am and James Barton's heading down to check out his own club. Luana's finally made it too, but will she get in? Even James has problems. Put on the guest list, mate. Yeah, you got to wait to go around there, mate. Things are looking good for Dean. And you are now on TV. It's not Jeremy Bill, all I like to say is Jeremy Babylon! In Preston, Oki's gig is rocking. Dean's disco heaven is Mustang Sally's in Wakefield. Oki's gig reaches its climax. Dean's 
on a mission. Mustang Sally's is his kind of place and he's sure to pull. Luana's made it. Seb's on the decks and James is in too, despite not being recognised by his own doorman. Despite his high hopes, Dean hasn't pulled, but he's not really that bothered. There's always tomorrow, mate. Well, we can always get him tomorrow. Always. We can always get him. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Next, it's a big night in Liverpool for club crazy podium dancer and beauty queen Alex. The single mum Maria and James Barton, who's got a crisis to sort. The big moment arrives for bedroom DJ Paul Hillier and would be super club owner Scott King gets things going at Mishmash. After her night out, Luana's cooling off on the beach in Ibiza. In there, I felt really, I just felt so, my body was dead relaxed, so me and Craig were having a dance and everything, and it was feeling very <coughs> horny, because um, I was completely relaxed, and Craig was feeling very horny too. So that was really nice as well because you just want to go home and just do naughty things. So I'm sat here on the beach now, thinking all sorts of mucky thoughts. <coughs> I'm going to have to jump in that water and cool down. <laughs> James and Jim are back in Liverpool and facing a crisis. On average, 14 clubbers die each year after taking ecstasy. Despite its proactive stance, the club has just had its first death and are also having to deal with an inaccurate report about it in DJ magazine. It's a serious issue for them. OK, so we've just had a meeting, me, James and Jim, because we had a bit of an incident with DJ magazine yesterday. Report and on young lady called this one to um, passed away after collapsing on the dance floor at the club a couple of, uh, about three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and the article is incorrect. And we had been in touch with all the press and given them a press release which very clearly stated that the girl didn't die in cream. Um, she died later on at the hospital and it might seem like a small point but to us it's quite an important point. They've been given the correct facts and they haven't reported them correctly and they've sensationalised it a little bit so we're going to have a few words and decide what to do about it today. Yeah. What's that? And the thing that's upsetting is that there's clubs in the country that throw kids out on the street if they run into problems with drugs and, you know, throw them out on the street in the morning they're just another hit and run. Whereas we try and do the right thing. Scott King's getting ready for his weekly club mishmash. It costs him two grand a year to run and so far he's lost money. But he's determined to turn it into a super club. This will be one of the biggest tunes at four o'clock in the morning. Even if the article's correct, the headline, it's the headline's the issue. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chris. Hi. Um, a little bit unhappy. 
when I just think it's it's just slack really and obviously we as a company are really really disappointed not only really disappointed but you know have even gone as far as speaking to our lawyers this morning because it's factually wrong and it puts us in an extremely bad light so but you know obviously I just wanted to speak to you to sort of express to you how disappointed we are and how upset we are at the whole thing all right Chris thanks for calling bye Full of apologies, phoned up yesterday because they knew it was a problem. Prepared to print a massive apology and a retraction, but I said we don't want them to do that. It, you know, it's just piss poor. It really is, honestly. I just get away with it all the time. With just hours to go before the night kicks off, Maria's got a babysitting crisis and might not get her club fix. I've got a base that we try and get in touch with the kids now. And if she's not in, I'll have to go to my mum. See if my mum will have the kids for me. Lifelong Everton fan James Barton grew up on a council estate just round the corner from Goodison Park. 19-year-old beauty queen Alex is taking her best friend Jared to cream for the first time and he's more worried about his clothes than she is. I really want to look dead good because we're going to cream. It's totally acceptable to dress however. Now whereas at one time it used to be you used to have to be dolled up to the nines and in your labels to get in. Now they let glow sticks and everything in. Well done. Well up, and again, and again. Everton are playing Wimbledon and James, his dad and Jim King are praying for a win. Maria couldn't get hold of her mum, so in desperation she's gone round to ask a friend to see if she'll mind the kids so Maria can go clubbing. Do you want to take it now? What do you want me to do? You just come to my... I'll see you later, guys. Ciao. Mishmash means everything to Scott. After almost a year, he feels he's got it right. He's been handing out flyers all week and he's confident tonight will be a success. Right, let me know. Alex and Jared are podium dancers in another Liverpool club. Even though it's a night off for them, Jared's determined to get on the podium at Cream. He's going to write on his hand so that he doesn't forget when he's drunk. He's going to make it his mission to get on the podium. <laughs> I am. And he said, I'm going to write it on my hand and go, oh, Alex on said, the stage. Yeah, Alex <laughs> said it's dead busy, so I'm just going to have to go rise. Remember, I'm on that podium. Don't forget. Everyone just faces the DJ box, right? Everyone just faces the front. It's like a big like warehouse room sort of thing and everyone faces the front like that. Do you want to know what oh God. With a babysitter on the way, Maria can get ready. Going to college, being a mum and having a social life is a big juggling act, but she thinks she's cracked it. You know, so, so to some people they might say, oh my God, how, how, how can you go to college and how can you study and you know, look after two children and still have time to go out and enjoy yourself? It's not like a burden to me. I enjoy doing it. I love kids. Anyway, I mean, you know, it's like a main part of my life. It's the night of the big DJ championships and this is it for Paul Hillier. If he makes it tonight, his life could change forever. Seb Fontaine's the chief judge in the bedroom DJ competition. It's a tough night for Paul. He's got to please the 2,000 strong crowd and beat four other finalists. He's brought 30 mates with him and his most loyal fan, his girlfriend Claire. DJs must be pretty nervous tonight because it's absolutely rammed. There's one out, one in, one out. Um, it's a lot busier than I thought it was going to be actually, but it's uh, a really good crowd. Oh! Not nervous. Eh? Not nervous. Um, yeah. Slightly. Yeah. It's a big club, mate. <laughs> Look at that. That'd just, be, that'd just be like the worst scenario, wouldn't it? Right, playing a half an hour set and the dance floor just like emptying before your eyes. Paul's never played such a big gig before and tensions rising. People do think we're a couple. They do. I 
have to know us. But <laughs> you are a couple. As I say, yeah, he camps are. it up and camps it up and they still say, is that your boyfriend or is that your girl? Are you two boyfriend and girlfriend? Are no, he's gay. Yeah, and it's like, is it not obvious? I've just yeah, basically yeah. winked at your fella. He's, 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 <laughs> just he's just been standing there in a skin tight red cat suit with feather bow and devil horns. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, God. As well as being the resident DJ, tonight Scott's also the doorman at Mishmash. Good news, two clubbers have arrived. And the night clubbing is just beginning for Alex, Jared and Maria. At Mishmash, the music's banging, but the dance floor's empty, and Scott King is putting a brave face on it. For what we've spent this week, if we get 40 people, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll have money back in our pocket again. <laughs> While Mishmash is having trouble getting clubbers in, Cream's already chucking them out. Days, James Barton doesn't have to work club night. He just turns up to check out how things are going. Despite a change of DJ at Mishmash, it's still not going off. Paul Hillier's big moment arrives, a make or break gig in front of Seb Fontaine and 2,000 clubbers. If he wins tonight, his prize will be £10,000 worth of mixing equipment, a gig in Ibiza, a trip to New York and the possibility of global superstardom. turn on the d at Mishmash. Will his tunes do the trick? Cream's tunes are doing it for the first time with Jared, and James Barton's happy. On a good night, he'll take at least 22,500 in ticket sales alone. This has been the worst night ever at Mishmash. Only 10 clubbers turned up. They're closing early and Scott's gutted. Paul's finished his set. Now all he can do is wait. He's very nervous. Sure, James Barton and Darren Hughes didn't, didn't ever say like, you know, should we, should we jack him? Well, I'm sure they did, but you know, I'm, glad, I'm sure they're glad they didn't. You know, it's still hard work, but it, you know, and as things have got bigger and you know, more importance and the projects have got bigger, it's um, you know, it, it's become a bit more difficult. But it, it, it's something that I really enjoy doing, and it's something that I wouldn't swap for uh, for anything really at the moment. Thank you for taking me to Green. It's fantastic. That's it. The cats to go on now. The judging has been extremely tight and has uh, most of been split up by one or two points. First place tonight and the 1999 Redemption DJ Champion is the support here! <laughs> 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 